Hello everyone, this is Jotto, and welcome to the Mana Grind Tournament Recap. Talking about the top decks, talking about the top cards, with the state of the metagame that comes out in an article form on Fridays on hearthbone.com. I'll put the link to the website in the description. This is going to be a bit of a shorter episode because I only have half the decks. Yeah, it's been a comedy of errors this week, to be honest, with all the stuff that's been going on. Um, the weekly show was delayed because it was in fact my birthday, so I took the day off to uh, like go do some other stuff, and then things kept happening, and then there's been a bunch of drama in the whole Hearthstone community, and then we had problems with getting deck lists. This happens from time to time because you need to rely on people to give you the deck lists. It doesn't always work. So, it's just been kind of tricky to get the random stuff. I've also been playing quite a bit of Heroes of the Storm when my internet lets me. My internet's been doing some weird stuff recently, but I've been playing a lot of Heroes of the Storm. And so, I'm actually going to make a video on Thursday. As I said, Thursday is my open video slot. I'm going to make a video on Thursday with sort of my first impressions on problems with the game and what they've got right. Which is exactly what you should be doing in Alpha, is giving constructive feedback. Anyway. On to the actual show, top 4 from NA, we don't have EU this week, but we do have the NA, we have in first place, NV Terrace M, uh, we got a MV player last week as well, if I do recall correctly, second place we have Stealth Lord, and tied for third we have Tate and Margrave. In first place we have Druid Watcher deck, piloted by Terrace M. So starting with the minions, we have Blood Mage Thalnos. Pretty standard for the uh, spell power, it's very very good with things like Swipe and Wrath, especially with the cycling part of Wrath. Also helps drawing a little bit of extra cards during the uh, early to mid game. Then we have Cairn and Sylvanas and the Black Knight to hold down the mid game. Black Knight is essential in Druid decks, you don't get that hard removal, you need the Black Knight as hard removal. Then up Ancient of Lore, sets up your late game by drawing into your actual threats, which you really need. It can also heal you against Hunter, although it always feels kind of bad to heal yourself with an Ancient Lore, but you can do it if needed. Then have one big game Hunter as a Ragnaros answer. As I said, Druid doesn't have hard removal, so you need sort of the semi-hard removal minions like big game Hunter and Black Knight. Now then we have two Ancient Watchers along with one Defender of Argus, two Keeper of the Groves, and two Sunfury Protectors as the Shield's Up Engine. Now, the Shield's Up Engine involves using Ancient Watchers as defensive and offensive tools. In this particular case, we've got three defensive enablers and two offensive enablers in the case of the Keepers. The Keepers also have a lot of extra utility with other things, silences and two damage. They're just never dead. They're very, very, very powerful in Druid decks in general. As for the rest of it, we have Azure Drake. Sets up the mid game along with Chillman Yeti. Trades more evenly than uh, Azure Drake does, but has less overall utility. And Druid of the Claw, one of the singular best 5 drops in the game. Lastly for the minions we have two Harvest Golems which really help against aggro decks. Generally this deck is very good against aggro, you've got the Ancient Watchers and you have Harvest Golems along with Druid of the Claw which you can innovate Town for example. Now onto the spells. We have the pretty standard Double Wrath, Double Swipe, Innervate, Force Nature, Savage Draw combination. That's standard in almost all Druid decks so I'm not going to go over that. But uh, the Mark of the Wild tech card is something which a lot more people have been running recently. Some people are running two of, I don't really like a two of, two of, they seem to get stuck in your hand a lot. Uh, from playing with it, if you have two, they get stuck in your hand a lot, but you want the effect every so often, so having one is really, really nice. It's also an extra defensive option on Ancient Watchers. Put on an Ancient Watcher, you get a 6-7 with Taunt, they're probably not getting over that anytime soon. It doesn't even get hit by Big Game Hunter. So it's a very, very potent wall. You can also put it on a Druid of the Claw to make a 6-8 with Taunt. Again, very difficult to remove. On to second place, Stealth Lord, who's playing Rogue. That is a perfect name for this. Stealth Lord playing Rogue Aggro. Rogue Aggro is also an interesting deck that we haven't seen in a while, especially in Standard. We see it in Limited a lot, but not in Standard. On to the minions, we have Blood Mage Thanos and Nero Jenkins as the only legendaries in the deck. Blood Mage Thanos functions as a very persistent threat that your opponent has to think about. It's more psychological, I found, with Blood Mage with Rogue, as opposed to uh, Sure Impact, which is what uh, Leroy Jenkins is. Both of them are quite psychological threats, it's sort of the does he have it type thing. A Blood Mage Eviscerate will kill a Chillwind Yeti, and you get to combo the Eviscerate using the Blood Mage on turn 4. Kills a Yeti pretty much dead, which is very important, it also helps with the Blade Flurry. 
backstabs, rogues use blood mage pretty much better than any other class from what I've experienced. As for the rest of the minions, Leroy is the burst finisher. I have found you need burst finisher in this kind of deck. Um, as I've gone back into the competitive scene recently, uh, I took a long break, focused a lot on media and less on actually playing the game. But uh, I've gone back into the competitive scene recently, and the first deck I really, really tested was Rogue Aggro uh, with some of the people I've been playtesting with, Fire and Porky. So. Yeah, Rogue Aggro is a deck that I know fairly well, but that was unlimited. In actual standard, you need the Leroy, you really do. If you have the Leroy, you get a bunch of extra punch, which is what you need against things like Warrior and Druid, as they have armor and healing, respectively. As for the rest of the deck, we have Azure Drake, really helps with the uh, mid-game, also powers up your backstabs. Defender of Vargas helps get over things like counters with explosive traps. SI7 is just one of the best three drops in the game. Argent Squire, Fairy Dragon, Harvest Golem, all very persistent early threats, lets you get a lot of pressure in early. Loot Hoarder is just is designed just to fuel the deck. You play a 2 drop, you waste some of their mana for hero power, or you just get in 2 damage or trade with something, and you draw a card. Very very good minion, very very underestimated. Lastly for the minions we have 2 Chewman Yetis for trading and 1 Spiteful Smith which can be used very very powerful with things like Blade Flurry. As the actual spells, we do have, as I said earlier, two eviscerates, deal with a lot of things like Frothing Berserker, Unbound Elemental, Yetis if you have Blood Mage. One Blade Flurry is essential in these kinds of decks. You don't really want to be running two, but the one Blade Flurry tech is very important in many, many matchups. The Blade Flurry is powered by two Deadly Poisons and also the Spiteful Smith. Three damage Blade Flurries or four damage Blade Flurries is pretty much all you need off that. I have one Sap to deal with big, slow taunts like Ancient of War. One sprint to refuel your hand and cold blood for that final extra punch. As for the weapons, we have a one of Assassin's Blade. Assassin's Blade Deadly Poison is a win condition on its own and helps a lot with things like warriors. Speaking of warrior, we have the obligatory warrior control deck, who this time was uh, piloted by Tate. This is the most consistent deck in the format. It just is. It's in every single top four. I think it's been in every single top four for the past three months or so. Which is incredibly impressive. It's always a one-off. It's can it can be a two-off. It's almost always a one-off. However, starting with the early game, we have Armor Smith along with one Frothing Berserker in this version, which is very interesting. Two Acolyte Pain, two Cruel Taskmaster, and a Senjin to replace the uh, second Frothing Berserker. Very very interesting. You're losing a little bit of punch, but you have some extra defense against the aggro. This is the Enrage Engine. Helps set up your early to mid game and make sure you don't get run over by faster decks. Then for the spells, we have one of Brawl for board clear, two Shield Slam along with Shield Block for that big burst damage straight away. Shield Slam is actually hard removal in this kind of deck. Then we have Whirlwind to power your own Enrages while board clearing. Two slams, again, can power your own enrages, drawing cards, and can also just be used to pair with execute. Slam is pretty much the best pair with execute because you draw a card, so it's not a two for one. Then for the weapons, we have one Gore Howl, which is used for minion removal a lot, or it can be a straight win condition with Alex Straza, and two fiery war axes as direct damage against the racier archetypes like Hunter, for example. It can also be used as minion removal against things like Zoo. Now, as the actual legendary package, we have one Alexstrasza to pair with Gorhal. Also does a lot of damage. Generally, this Alexstrasza will sometimes deal 15 damage if all of your threats are dealt with early game. And then I have one Baron Geddon, a bit of extra board clear, forces them to remove it. Karen for just straight trading. Groma Hellscream and Ragnaros the Fire Lord as sort of finishers. They're quick finishers. Lots of damage, lots of burst damage. Lets you get through very, very easily. Grom and Cool Taskmaster is 12 damage. That can be directed, it can be taunted, but it can be directed, whereas Ragnaros is kind of like rolling dice, but it's still very, very powerful. Then we have Ysera as the final big finisher, and Sylvanas to help with the mid game. Lastly in the deck, we have a Faceless Manipulator, as Faceless can copy your opponent's stuff, but mostly will be copying your own stuff. Things like Gromash Hellscream, Ragnaros, Ysera, Alexstrasza. Not so much Baron Geddon, but you can. Even things like Karen and Sylvanas. Pretty much every single large minion in the deck is good to copy with Faceless, as the Faceless will actually cost between 1 and 3 or 4 mana less than just the second one. Lastly for today we have Margrave, who is playing a Handlock. 
Now, I've already said I don't like the name, but I'm going to use it because that's what people know it for. So, starting off with the Leroy Jenkins, you need a little bit of extra finish against other handlocks specifically. It also helps some of the other control -y matchups and even some of the rushy ones like Hunter. Uh, against other handlocks, you need to burst them down straight from 15, otherwise they get their Molten Giants up, so you need the Leroy for that. Then we have Lord Jaraxxus, heals you back up, not playing Alexstrasza in this case, which is very interesting. A lot of people play Alexstrasza over Lord Jaraxxus, but in this case we're playing Lord Jaraxxus first as a health reset. Helps you get a bit of board control, gives you 6-6s, six which power things like Shadow Flames. We then have a Faceless Manipulator. Faceless Manipulator in this deck is kind of like it is in the Warrior deck. It has a lot of stuff to copy. What is it copying? We've got four giants along with ancient watchers, then we have four taunt givers and two twilight drakes. The full shields up engine is in this actual deck. All six major targets in terms of mountain giant, molten giant, twilight drake, then we have the minor target and ancient watcher, which is still a pretty big wall against aggro decks, along with all four taunt givers. Not just the one of defender, not just one of sun fury, we have all four. Then for the rest of the minions, we have two Iron Cal because you want the silences, you really need to get them, especially in the mirror match. Mirror match silences are very, very important. They're important in general, especially when you have this much card draw with life tap, you can afford to be running Iron Cal, not Spellbreaker, because you just want mana efficient silence. But especially in the mirror match, to deal with things like Twilight Drakes. And then lastly, we have Earthenwing Farseer to mitigate your life tap damage a little bit. Moving on to the spells. This particular deck is running the variant of board control that a lot of them have been running recently. It's been a recent switch from two Shadow Flame, one Hellfire, to two Hellfire, one Shadow Flame, which I have found quite interesting. Especially with Hunters being so common, it is interesting to see that you're running the two Hellfires, but then they can also help with rushing down as they do three direct damage. Then we have Siphon Souls, healing up, and just straight removal can be targeting things like Ancient of Lore, Ancient of War, Fire Elementals, Savannah High Mains are even relevant nowadays. There's a lot of things Siphon Soul targets, a very very good destruction spell. One Power Overwhelming for Reach is usually used with Leroy Jenkins for the 10 straight. Two Soul Fires, similar thing, but can be used as removal as well. Lots of things to discard in your hand. Pretty important targets to discard, but you almost always have a full hand, so the Soul Fire doesn't hurt too much. Then have two Mortal Coils to help deal with things like Harvest Golem and Lepernome, for example. And lastly, one Shadow Ball, just as a sort of extra concession to things like Frothing Berserker and Unbound Elemental. Sometimes you don't have the Soul Fires, you need the extra Shadow Bolt. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback or just want to talk, put it in the comment section below. If you want to come chat to me, I'll put the... Uh, Team speak address that I'm usually on in the description below. Now, as for now, this has been Jotto. If you want to uh, tune into the Heroes of the Storm, almost at Heart of the Swarm. Good job with the acronyms, guys. Anyway, if you want to tune into the Heroes of the Storm sort of first impression, then that will be coming out on Thursday, hopefully, if my internet lets me. Of course, it's been really sketchy recently. But as for now, this has been Jotto. Signing off.